Well, thank you very much, uh, Program Director, and, uh, and a warm welcome to uh, all of the delegates to the Open Science Colloquium here at the University of the Free State. Um, I want to emphasize warm. It's actually particularly hot outside. Uh, I got a WhatsApp message this morning from my son uh, in Cape Town, and he gave me a, a picture of a weather report. Um, now, I don't know whether it was true, but all of the, uh, the minimum and the maxima was was depicted on this uh, chart, and there's Bloemfontein was the maximum 233. Now, I, I, I don't know it was, uh, was that a mistake or was that deliberate, uh, but, uh, but I hope that that gives sort of the context and the warmness uh, in which uh, this colloquium and deliberation of the next two days will, will, ha will happen. Now, as Betsy Eister have, have mentioned, this is a colloquium that has been uh, organized and is hosted by the University of the Free State and CUT. But I would like to emphasize the larger family in the region. Uh, we, uh, we engage under a banner called Herdic uh, with uh, other institutions as well. Uh, the Matea College, uh, part of the TVET College here in Bloemfontein, and also Maluti uh, TVET College in um, Kwakwa, which is one of our other, other campuses. And then obviously also with Sol Plachi in Kimberley. And, and it's great to, um, to see that collaboration. And the collaboration is not only in the particular area of library or information systems, it, um, it, it covers teaching and learning, it covers research, it covers sharing uh, administrative experience uh, so that we all belong to uh, a system that complements and strengthens one another uh, rather than only to compete with one another. So, but uh, it's for me quite important to, to, um, to also say thank you for CUT to be uh, the co-host of, uh, of this event. Now, Betsy also said that or suggested that the aim uh, or the purpose of this colloquium is to raise the awareness of the costly, and I would probably say perhaps an unsustainable current model of publication uh, in excess to publication material. And this is a debate that we had for, I think, for a quite a long period, uh, but it's often to find the right strategy and the right methodology to effectively challenge uh, um, this, um, this particular model. So it is a model uh, of open access versus subscription. And, and that is the deliberation and the debate that you're probably gonna have for most of your engagement over the next two days. But coming back to the University of the Free State, so when the university signed the Berlin Declaration on Open Access to Knowledge in Science and Humanities in 2011. At that point, this university committed uh, itself to the wide and free dissemination of its scholarship by means of open access platforms. So, so directly or indirectly, at that point, we already have made that commitment towards uh, um, using open access platforms. So open access, which I don't need to explain to you, you all are professionals, you should explain to me what that all is about, but it's, um, it's the practice of making peer-reviewed scholarly research and literature freely available online uh, to everyone, and I think to emphasize to everyone interested in reading it. So access with no fees. So that is actually what it's about in short. But if we if we really unpack how complicated the costing is and what impact the costing actually have on individual institution and on the system, then uh, we can start off by saying that researchers pay article processing charges, APCs, for, for publication. Libraries pay for providing access to scholarly output through subscriptions which are not in the database, and I've got a sense that there might also be a double dipping uh, that come in there. Access is very limited with publishers' licenses allowing access to only members with specific article processing charges ranges. And then, th so those are the embedded costs that we normally would find in, these, in the um, subscription model. But if you couple that to the growing unaffordability 
due to escalation of the cost, purely through inflation. And you couple that with foreign exchange instability, then we're sitting here with a an, an cost model that actually, for me, is, un, is, is inequitable, actually. It's not equity of access. Is there not freely guarantee due to the fact that the cost is challenging that? Now, I know that, uh, and I want to acknowledge, uh, again, Professor Ahmed Bauer, uh, CEO of University of South Africa, and uh, he's been one of the um, the key drivers between uh, uh, um, behind this initiative of trying to bring equity in the system. And I think uh, a phrase that I probably would quote from you, Ahmed, that you often you uh, when you describe this whole costing issue as a, a human rights injustice, uh, and that is probably what it is about. It is a human rights injustice. So how do we actually make sure that we challenge the status quo. And there is where I believe Open Access 2020 will come in. It's in fact moving from a subscription model to a model of open access. But it is to convert, hopefully, resources that is currently spent on journal subscriptions into funds that can support open access. And why are we doing that? I think to be equitable in a sense, but also to ensure that our younger cohort of researchers and scholars have got the ability to freely conduct research, to freely access material, so that we can produce high quality researchers and scholars for our system. But I also would like to leave a thought, uh, maybe one or two, yeah, for, for the delegates to deliberate on on the next two days. And that is that if you want to challenge the status quo, uh, which is open access versus the subscription model, it can't be an institutional approach. It will have to be a national approach. It can't be one institution or two institutions. We will have to look at that jointly. Because we must include, therefore, all universities. We must include science councils, research institutions, public libraries, hospitals, private enterprises, government. All of those need to be, need to be brought into the fold in one way or another. But of course, we must realize that South Africa is actually quite a small, small, a small science system compared to global standards. And in fact, I, I want to make the argument that we should include the continent, uh, the rest of Africa, into this discussion. Now, a lot of you, or some of you probably would say, if you take South Africa out of the African science system, then, uh, then it's probably not much happening on the continent. But nevertheless, I think the African continent and the engagement uh, with what's happening on the continent need to be included in this whole debate. So therefore, in conclusion, and on behalf of the University of the Free State and the Central University of Technology, I want to wish you well uh, on your deliberations over the next two days. And I think what I would like to see as an outcome is to promote a more, and the emphasis should probably be on transparent model of open access. Because the subscription model, probably, if you delve into the detail, there's probably just more and more questions. And that make people not trusting the system actually at all. So any new system need to be or model that you want to engage on need to be transparent. But very importantly, uh, as I said, this the debate and discussion has been coming on for a couple of years. And to be able to make sure that we get to an outcome, hopefully this deliberation will also give value or put forward some timelines. Was when do we want to achieve what? 
some specific goals. What are we going to be achieving? But very importantly, I believe for the University of the Free State, but that any other institution should ask as well, is what is expected from the individual institutions in this specific model and debate. So that, those are the things that I would like you to deliberate on and to see whether we could come up with an understanding of an, an open access model. What are the next steps? What are the goals? Make sure it's transparent. What are the timelines? And ask yourself, what is expected from my institution that I'm representing here today? So once again, welcome to, uh, to this colloquium and to the University of the Free State. And I know it's going to be uh, a wonderful two days of deliberation. Thank you.